Would it be reasonable to describe this as a vintage LED tube? Because this is an LED replacement fluorescent tube, goes into an existing fixture, but it uses the existing inductive ballast. Um, so I'm not expecting a lot of circuitry in this. It's made by Samsung, length 590 millimeter. Um, I guess ultimately that equates roughly to a two foot tube, in other words, uh, is rated, in, whereas it replaces an 18 watt tube, the T8 tube, where the T8 relates to eighths of an inch, uh, eight eighths of an inch, one inch diameter. Um, it runs at 10 watts instead of 18 watts. So given that this is intended for use with what they call the CCG, conventional control gear, uh, I wonder then if it's just a stack of LEDs that is higher voltage than the original fluorescent tube it replaced, the operating voltage. It's got the usual, well it's just got my every sticker on it, it's got no lead, no mercury, um, doesn't mention the fact it's probably got, you know, just a, a shit ton of other chemicals in it that you should worry about. On-off cycles, it's really odd, it says 50,000 on-off cycle if it's on for 30 seconds and off for 30 seconds, but 200,000 if it's on for 2 seconds and off for 15 seconds? How the heck does that go? Okay. Uh, you have to use the special LED tube starter for operation and safety. I'd guess mainly to avoid a starter overheating. I'm not really sure. Um, but anyway, let's get that out of the way. Uh, and before I open this up, I shall do a doodle of the circuitry in a traditional fluorescent fitting and how this uh, fits in with that. So, uh, in a traditional fluorescent fitting, you have your live, you have your neutral, uh, it goes through a inductor or choke or ballast, whatever you want to call it, uh, usually a fairly chunky sort of iron core thing, and then it goes down and into the tube and goes through a little heating element at the end of the tube, comes out, goes through a starter, let's just draw it as an S, comes to the other end, goes into the little heating element at the other end, pops out and goes back to neutral. Sometimes you get a capacitor across that just for power factor correction. Uh, here is the tube itself with its mercury and argon vapour inside. So what happens is that this inductor here is a bit slim into the current through the tube. But initially when you turn it on, uh, the tube doesn't strike because it's not the electrode the electrode drop, the voltage drop across the electrode is too high. Sometimes the tube's very warm, sometimes if it's been preheated, it will just strike straight away. If it doesn't, uh, it stays unlit and you get the full mains voltage across the starter. The starter usually has a little bimetallic strip inside with neon gas surrounding it, and the neon gas glows, the starter heats up, the bimetallic strips bend over until they touch. Current flows through the heating elements at the end, which then get hot because they're heating elements. The thermionic emission, or emission, em, thermionic emission, thermionic emitters, as they're officially called. And once they're hot enough, uh, they start emitting the electrons just because they're hot and the voltage across the end drops, the tube strikes across and it lights. And if it doesn't light, then it, it'll keep trying. With the modern electronic starters, it would just basically run those heat elements for a certain length of time, the electrodes to bring them up to temperature, and then it would try just opening it once or a couple of times just to try to get it light. And if it didn't, it wouldn't stop there just flashing like the old ones do. Uh, it would just like have one go and that be it. So, what we're doing here is apparently we're putting this tube in and the tube has, I'm going to try and emulate what I think is inside this tube. I reckon there might be a resistor and a capacitor just purely for filtering, then a bridge rectifier. I shall zoom down this just a tad. I know that annoys some people, but if you've got a small screen, it's very helpful. So, the Input to the tube at one end, you've got the a limiting resistor, filter capacitor, rectifier, and then possibly just loads and loads of LEDs to make up the, the combined voltage to above what a traditional tube would have been. And it's notable that some of the very early tubes uh, got rid of the starter and they just linked the pins at both ends and they had a, the sort of live at one end, neutral at the other. That was phased out quite rapidly because facilities management operatives were going in, they were sticking this end of the tube 
into the holder, fumbling around this end and getting their fingers across the end. If they're holding on to metalwork, they, there was a high risk of an electric shock through the tube because the tube passes current all the time, even if it's not struck. Technically speaking, the same facility as manager operatives should know you don't do that anyway because um, you never know uh, if a fluorescent tube uh, is going to strike if you're holding the end of it. It could actually, an electrostatic discharge could actually make that strike and you could get a shock off it. But um, I, I probably held that way out of the uh, frame there. So they got rid of that approach and instead they use I, either just a link or a fuse or a PTC thermistor, something to protect against little incidents and other things. So basically now, no, no matter which way around you put the tube, this end here or that end there is just going to be bridged to the other end. The starter, I'm not sure what's in the starter here. I'm guessing it's going to be a link because it's not needed anymore in this approach. They just want it to link through. The only thing they want left in the circuit is this inductor. Uh, let's open the starter. Where are my schnips? These things are always notoriously quite difficult to open. That one wasn't. It looks like a fuse. Hold on, where's my magnifying glass? It says T2 amp. It's a time delay 2 amp fuse. That's all that's in it. It's designed to protect against worst case scenarios. Okay. I wonder if it's a fuse in the end of that as well. We shall find out. So basically speaking, we just end up that no matter which way around you put it, you're going to get live and neutral, live and neutral, through the choke, the inductor at the end of the tube and that limits the current. Now, the reason for the redu reduction in the power rating is, I would guess, and it specifically says this is not designed for electronic supplies. I recently looked at a lamp that had an unusually low number of LEDs and people mentioned that it's an electronic supply. It was the 2D lamp and that would act as a sort of current limited supply. This one's different. This one, if you do a formula XC, XL equals 2 pi FL, you can get an equivalent resistor value on an AC circuit in a perfect AC circuit for this. So that really just acts as a resistor, but fairly low loss. So I would guess that to reduce the power, they've increased the number of LEDs to the point that the voltage across them is higher in the tube. That might also suggest there is a smoothing capacitor to prevent flicker because Theoretically, I'll only conduct near the top of the sine wave. Okay, I've made my guesses. I have made my guesses. Let's open it up and see what's actually inside and see if I'm just talking crap. So let's bring the meter in. Oh, here's the instructions. The instructions say, uh, always have a qualified electrician to do your electrical work. I thoroughly disagree with that, even though I am a fully qualified electrician with loads of about 40 years behind me. Uh, not quite 40 years, but th 38 right now. Uh, always have a call for electrician. I would say if you're technically competent, you're going to get a more consistent job. You're going to get a more predictable job if you do it yourself in this in this era, if, particularly if you live in the UK where everything's been a bit de-skilled by vested interests. Uh, everybody knows who I'm having a wee pop at there. Um, the procedure for installing it is, well, disconnect the power. <laughs> Doubt that's going to happen in most instances. Uh, remove the tube, take the tube out, take the starter out, put your new shunt starter in, put the new tube in, turn the power on again. And then it's got technical specifications and all the liability. It says, uh, do not install this magnetic ballast's compatibility tube with glow starter. Okay. Do not replace with different types of LED tube risk of electric shock. Now this does, this isn't a thing. See, many of the modern ones just have the mains going straight to the end without the inductor. And uh, that means that if you put this tube in that, I've mentioned that already, it could go bang. I won't mention it again. Tonight's candy incident, it was sent by Carol Mock. He sent me some Reese's peanut butter cups complete with French spelling because uh, Carol comes from... Canada. So uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, which I'm just going to wee nibble of right now, the one that's left, which is looking slightly melty. Mm. Mm. Every country, we do share some ca common candies, but every country has a slightly different flavour, just due to local taste and manufacturing. He also sent a O. Henry 425, a limited edition, and he explained 
This was released as a special edition after marijuana was legalised over here. Apparently it is for attacking the cravings that occur five minutes after you partake in some 420. What is 420? I haven't a clue what 420 is. Maybe I should actually look that up. So this is a slab of caramel. Mmm. Covered in... Mmm. Salty peanuts. Mmm, that's nice. Okay. Back to the important stuff. Let's put this to continuity. And see if one of these ends is shorted out. Let's start with this end to see what end can take off. That does not look shorted out. That looks like it feeds the circuitry. The other end, let's flip this round. The other end is the one that's shorted out. Okay, let's take the other end off. Hmm. Should I really have stuck something in my mouth right now? Probably not. This appears to be held on by a couple of clips. I see this. I've not tried removing this, so I hope it's held on just by a couple of clips. Otherwise, there'll be a... Oh, that's, that was quite easy. Oh. 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 Little plug for the circuitry. What is in here? Okay. What holds this end, then? It's kind of wanting... It's not wanting to come out. I think we're going to have to take the other end out and explore it as well. This is the end with the shunt. Oh, it's got more circuitry in it. What's all that about? Can I get this out? What's all that about? Okay. Is it identical? Not sure. Right, tell you what, let's pull it out. Is this going to easily come out? Has it got plenty of wire room or have they done that thing where they push it into the pins and then solder it or crimp it, crimp it in this case, into the pins once it's been pushed in, meaning there's absolutely no slack for getting it back out again? Oh dear, I think it's the latter. Let's try pulling this out. I shall zoom back up again. Uh, just purely so that uh, people with smaller screens can actually see what's happening here. That ain't coming out. Okay, I'm going to have to sniff it. Off with the pins. Is that going to work? Yes, it is. Ooh, what is that? What is that component? I see a lot more suckage than I was expecting. A lot more circuitry. This is going to take a bit of analysis. Hmm. What about the other end then? The other end also plugs into the strip. The strip has a uh, got lots of LEDs. It's got a little power reel. It says B plus. B minus, V plus, V minus. Okay. Let's... And it seems to be common up to the other end. That's odd. I wonder if they've just split the circuitry up to both ends. Let's lock these pins off and get this end off as well. This is quite jammed in here. It's also covered in hot melt glue. That might make things just a little bit harder for analysis. This seems just so complicated compared to what it was going to be. Almost disappointingly so. I had the, the feeling it was just going to be some trivial little bit of circuitry and I'm hopefully not damaged it by grabbing it like that. Uh, this ain't good. This ain't good. Come out. Come out. It's not coming out. I may have to pause if this isn't going to come out soon because I don't want to just yank it in case I damage it. I wonder if there's actually a little inductor in there. I get the feeling that this may have active current limiting circuitry in it. There's the connector out. Uh, I think this uh, this thing is dead. Anyway, oh, here it comes. Ooh. 
It's got an inductor. It's got a little satellite circuit board underneath it. What is that for? I think that's for screening. That's weird. Is it for screening? It's only got one connection that I can see, or is it a couple? I think it's just one connection. It appears to be just for screening. I can't really see any other purpose. I wonder if it's to... Yeah, I don't know. I haven't a clue why they've got that little screening plate there. Um, that comes off. Oh, this thing is so complicated. I'm going to have to go and see if I can reverse engineer this. And see, well, I don't know how deep I can reverse engineer because it it's rather jam-packed. I'm going to have to try and find out where these chips are and see if maybe they are. Maybe a power supply at this end and filtering. And then an inductor, uh, not an inductor, but a little switch mode current regulated supply at the other end. Right, one moment, please. One fairly large chunk of reverse engineering later, I should mention that the circuitry was only stuck in this one because uh, it was glued in, and in the back of that is just what looks like a resistor or fuse, probably a little fuse. Um, so that's the shunted end, so I didn't need to cut those pins off at all. It doesn't really matter, it's not exactly going back together again. The circuitry starts, it's quite odd, they have, it, it is an LED driver, and uh, more interestingly, it's a bright power LED driver using a circuit based on their recommended circuit on their data sheet. Their data sheet was not terribly helpful. I found other information in other places that was a bit more helpful. So it starts off with this circuit board here. It's got um, a fuse. It's got a capacitor. It's got two inductors, a bridge rectifier in the back. And if you notice me, just drop into stunned silence here. It's because it looked as though it had a really odd pinout. I was thinking, oh, that'll be a bridge rectifier. And then it was like, oh no, it's got six, it's got six pins. It's not, it's some specialist thing. In reality, it looks like it's got six pins because they've poked the leads from other components through from the back and pushed them right up next to it. So it just made it look like it had more, but it is just a plain bridge rectifier. Um, it's got a metal ox of resistor, it's got a it's got a big fat capacitor, but the capacitor is not connected at all in the circuit board to any of this circuitry. It's just purely connected to the connector. Okay. Let's take a look at it. So we've got the fuse, it's quite an odd, it's quite a low value. T one hundred and sixty milliamp. I th would have thought they'd gone for just something a bit higher, I wonder. Because once that fuse goes, it's gone. The, the light is dead. It's not like you're gonna repair it. Uh, then there's a hundred nanofarad capacitor. Um, there's an inductor with a resistor. I didn't actually measure the value of the resistors. What are the value of those resistors across it? They are 472, 4720, 4700 ohm. 4700 ohm or 4.7K. 4.7K. Oh, that's wrong. Or 4K7. So there's the little inductors that are for presumably um, filtering, noise suppression. Then we get the bridge direct fire, and oddly, they've got the metal oxide varistor on the DC side of it. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Then it goes out to the little four pin connector here, and uh, that goes onto the uh, LED circuit board, which has four tracks. Well, it's actually kind of got four tracks and a string of LEDs. It's got the two outer tracks just go from one end of the board to the other and that just supplies that DC supply down to the actual the um, power supply circuitry, the uh, driver. But then it's also got another two connections that come up and go to the LEDs and the LEDs are divided in two sections. We've got a total of 46 LEDs but there are 23 in this half and 23 in that half and both those are connected parallel and each just is just a single chip LED so although they're quite they've got a fairly large chip in them um, so it will be about 70 volts across this panel. I'm guessing part of the logic behind that is they can also use the same panel with some component changes in a 110 volt uh, tube so uh, we've got the four connections running along. It means that when you plug this circuit board in, it's effectively putting this capacitor just across the LEDs, just as smoothing on the LED side, just to maybe reduce ripple a little bit. 
Uh, so it goes down to the other end of the circuit board. And from there, we're going to use a commercial schematic. It's not going to be the official. Uh, it's not going to be the official bright power confidential schematic because they've just printed bright power confidential right across it in an unhelpful manner, and then put it on the internet for everybody to view anyway. It's a bit strange. But here's the circuit board. We've got the bright power chip with support components around it. We've got the two current sense resistors. I'll show you where they are in the schematic in a moment. We've got this big MOSFET, and it's a bit confusing because there's also apparently a MOSFET in the chip, and it's almost like this is a secondary MOSFET, and I'm really not sure why. Um, and we've got under this MOSFET is the transformer. Is it underneath that? Hold on. Yes, it is. There's the transformer there. There's a MOSFET on the other side. And it's quite odd. It is kind of a transformer, but it's also an inductor. Um, I mean, a transformer is effectively an inductor in a way. But if you look at the schematic, and we'll just go down to the schematic. It shows that, well, there's the equivalent to the supply command. This is basically what we've got on that other circuit board here. Um, things worthy of note, it doesn't have that little capacitor there unless that's mounted locally on the power supply board. But everything else is almost the same. There's the output going to the LEDs, and it does have most of these components. Right, okay. So, this is where I should be actually showing it another one, but I could, I could walk you through the circuit, that would help. I'll just zoom up just a little tiny bit. Whoops, and by zoom up, I mean I'll just fumble about with my big fat fingers touching everything until I stop the thing recording. Uh, I'm very glad it saved that before it uh, before it decided to go back to the home screen, but not to worry, we're back. So it is based around a buck regulator, right? And the buck regulator, it's taking the, the main supply. There's not really an awful lot of smoothing up here because it looks as though the circuitry is trying to ride the sine wave. There's a connection here. Uh, called LN, which has a feed from up here through the LEDs. I'm not really sure what it's doing here, but it, inside, when I found uh, information about the chip, it does hint at power factor control. So it may be trying to ride the sine wave and, you know, provide a much more efficient lamp. Complex. Not sure what's going on there. Um, so the circuitry has the... Uh, MOSFET, well I see the MOSFET that's switching the inductor, but there's also another MOSFET in here between the current sense and the output. And this MOSFET kind of looks as though it's kind of turned on by these components here. And I'm wondering if this is just a, a stabilization thing, that this is just an auxiliary MOSFET, and all the main switching is done from in here. Because it actually, looking at the sort of circuitry around that, it does hint at that, that it is some sort of power-up thing. I'm not sure. But I get the feeling that the current flows through these resistors, maybe um, doesn't turn that MOSFET on until the voltage has gone high enough. But also, that's probably going to the uh, power supply circuitry, VCC, to initially establish power before the actual system is fully powered up, and that will introduce a small delay before it powers up, before the bootstrap circuit kicks in. Because that's what's really odd about this. It has an inductor, but it also has a winding off that inductor for feedback and to provide power for the, the chip. This little cluster components up here are... Are they even shown in the, uh, in the official... The official circuit? It's showing that diode, which I think is doing roughly an equivalent thing. No, it's not. That's the that's the uh, flywheel diode. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure why they've done it this way. But there is a, a little filter circuit there. Oh, is that the flywheel circuit with some filtering across it? That's that's what it is. It's not what I thought it was. I thought it was for clipping the sort of uh, transients. Um, I guess it's maybe not so critical in this type of circuit. Um, so initially when it powers up and it starts, it turns this uh, transistor on, current will flow through the LEDs, they'll be limited by the inductor, and then when it turns off, the magnetic field will collapse the inductor, but it'll also put uh, power out through this diode to the other side of the capacitor, which uh, in gr greatly increases efficiency. That also induces current in this secondary winding, which then goes through this diode, 
and uh, through this resistor and it charges the supply capacitor which was probably charged initially by these and by some circuitry in here. There's not an awful lot of information in here, much less with bright power than you often find in other manufacturers, maybe just because they are pretty much cutting edge with uh, LED technology and they don't want to spill the beans too much. Uh, this also has a resistor network going to a feedback pin. I get the feeling that whereas if the output gets shorted, then the coil here would... Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work with a transformer type arrangement, where a, a reg, the buck regulator range, arrangement. It may actually be... It's monitoring anyway the voltage across this coil, and if it goes too high or too low, it can actually then sense that in the feedback input and it can actually cut it back. It knows something's gone wrong. I would guess one of the most likely scenarios is the LEDs going open circuit and it, it's just so it can detect that. The current uh, goes through this MOSFET, goes through the little MOSFET inside the current sense and then goes through these current sense resistors and measures the voltage across them to see how much current is actually flowing in the circuit and that gives it an indication of when to turn the, the MOSFETs off. Anything else worth looking at on this. The other things other worthy of mention, lots of filtering and then a com mode suppression choke, which is uh, this dinky little component here. It's a tiny little com mode suppression choke just going out to LEDs. This is all geared down to reduction of RF interference. Oh, and there is a big fat local capacitor. I didn't trace that out. What is it doing? Is it then that capacitor there? Which would kind of screw the power factor thing up. Hmm. Mumble, 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 ponder, ponder. Let's uh, get the meter and I'll just uh, put it off screen because I'm always looking for is beeps. So where's that capacitor? There's a capacitor connect on. Is it connected to? Let's connect to there. That is connected. It's kind of, mm, there's something else in the, oh, that's connected to the LED. Oh, that is the capacitor for the, uh, that's the capacitor for the LEDs. That's this one here. Um, I guess this one, if anything, not sure. Uh, maybe I should have actually researched this more. It's just so cramped. Hold on. I'm just pondering. I'm just playing about here. I'm just meddling with circuitry. Things that uh, just uh, I'm thinking of now that I didn't think of earlier when I was looking through the data sheet. So that's connected there. And that is connected to maybe. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. No, it is connected there. Okay, so this capacitor here is mounted locally and it is a low value which doesn't mess with the power factor correction. It means that this is seeing, this circuitry is basically riding the sine wave. That's interesting. Uh, my research was also interrupted by a message from e uh, YouTube saying that they're removing my channel verification, but I can appeal it. That's nice. Um, apparently, the the little tick that says that my channel is my channel uh, was confusing people. Um, and it's only for big celebrities and companies like Coca-Cola and uh, Johnny Depp and stuff like that. And... And not mere mortals with 1,500 videos and 555,000 subscribers. That's very strange, YouTube. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe they're just going to use a different system or something. But anyway, I don't know. So it's an interesting little thing. Uh, it just took, as you can tell from the beginning of the video, I was just completely and utterly wrong. I thought it was going to be the choke and then a sort of balancing off the number of LEDs. I really wasn't expecting them to actually have the full power supply inside, which means that ultimately, dependent on this capacitor here, uh, not this capacitor here, uh, it will certainly, that would, re that would increase flicker if that capacitor failed. What about the, at the other end? Oh, that's another capacitor going to the output, so they've really put tons of capacitance across the LEDs. Yeah, that's strange. And this one's before the filter and then the other one's through the LEDs and then at the other end, I'm just I'm just pondering. It's a complex little thing. They've jammed so much into a small space. Ultimately, I suppose the reason that they've got those bus bars going from one end to the other is just so they can spread the circuitry around and have the, the light in the middle and then cram circuitry into both ends. Just more complex. And I was thinking I've come across much simpler tubes that just don't have that amount of circuitry. But then maybe they're the one... Oh, they... 
they're probably the modern ones that are using the linear current regulation and making up the large numbers of LEDs. Uh, I have to try and find some of them now. Interesting. But there we go. That's what's inside the Samsung LED tube. Probably an obsolete one now, I think. Partly because it is so complex versus uh, the modern ones tend to be a lot simpler. But very interesting to take apart. And I may try and scavenge it and use uh, the bits again, including the tube. Just pop it all back together with a bit of different circuitry and see if I can make a nice little ambient low-level light.